أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد brothers and I assume they might be sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته today we are going to have a session on khutba but before we do that I just want to um, go through some thought process about uh, khutbah in these times in which we are in. And so we begin by the verse that Allah SWT is telling us, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, idha nudiya li salati min yawmil jumati fas'aw ila dhikrillahi wa dharul bay'a, thalikum khayrul lakum in kuntum ta'lamoon, O you who have believed, when the adhan is called for prayer on the day of Jum'ah, then proceed to the remembrance of Allah and leave trade. This is better for you if you only know. So this is obviously the command that Allah has given to us on the day of Jum'ah. So the Tarbiyah department, inshallah, we will go through uh, this thought process and how to conduct a Jum'ah khutbah for Jum'ah. But this will be towards the end. Um, as we go along, we there are some thoughts I want to share with you um, as we are going through these uh, tough times. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and save our family, save the ummah from this kind of calamity. Um, just to give a little refreshing of our mind on the virtues of your know, Jum'ah, things that we can do on Yom Jama, even though we are still at home. Uh, what to avoid even though we are still at home. And a lot of the things we did not, um, I did not add because uh, this is, you know, what pertains to Masjid. Um, I assume we will not be uh, dealing with that, but there are certain things we can still do and things that we can avoid. Now, praying Jum'ah at home in the current crisis and how to do a khutbah. So these are some of the thought processes that I want us to go through. Um, and obviously, the, the fourth of praying Jum'ah at home, how to do a khutbah, these are some of the things that we want to focus on. But to get there, I thought it will be a good um, idea of um, you know, enlightening our our brothers and sisters um, about some of these things that we can still do at home. So, some of the virtues of your Mujuma. Uh, we know that Friday is a very special day. So, whether we are at home or we are in the masjid or not, Friday still should be considered as a special day. That we are the last ummah basically to come and but uh, will be the foremost on the day of resurrection. Though the former nations were given the Holy Scriptures before us, but this day, which is a Friday, the celebration of which was made compulsory for them, but they differed about it. So Friday is a special day, even for the people of the book, but they differed ab about it. So Allah gave us guidance to it, and all the other people are behind us in this respect. The Jews will have tomorrow, this is their Sabbath on a Saturday, and the Christian the day after, which will be a Sunday. This is Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. So they have lost it. Now we may not lose the day because this is the last of Ummah, but we can certainly lose the blessings if we don't focus on what the day of Juma brings. So even though we are at home, we must understand that this is a special day. And it doesn't have to be in a masjid, but the day of Juma is a special day. Um, it's a, a day of great event. 
you know, Prophet said, Khairu yawmin tala'at alayhi shams, yawmul jum'a, fihi khulik adam, wa fihi udkhil al-jannah, wa fihi ukhrijan minha, wa la taqum musa'atu illa fi yawmul jum'a. So, Allah, Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best day on which the sun has risen is Friday. It is the day Adam was created. It is the day he entered the paradise, the day he was expelled. And the hour will not be established except on a Friday. So even though things are uh, can go rough, uh, we know that it is a Friday that the world will come to an end. May Allah save us and protect us from that uh, moment. It's a day of Eid for the Muslim. Again, you don't have to be in the masjid for feeling this uh, comfort that Yom al um, And I'm trying to go a little quickly because I want us to get to the bottom of the slide to where we will do some of the thought process on giving khutbah at home. In the Yom Eid, Ja'alahu Allahu lil Muslimina faman ja'a ila Jum'ati. فَلْيَخْتَسِلْ وَإِنْ كَانَ طِيبٌ فَلْيَمَسَّ مِنْهُ وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالسِّوَاكِ So even though you might not go to masjid, but at home, make it like a special day. Make now that everybody is at home. Now everybody is there. Make it like the day of Eid. Oh, Prophet said, Oh, Muslim, Allah has made this day a day of Eid for Muslims. So whoever comes for Jummah, should have a bath on this day and whoever has perfume, you know, ether should apply it and use the miswak. So even you pray your zuhr at home or those who might want to pray Jum'ah at home and we'll come to that, still make it a special day, like how everybody will get up on the day of Eid and have ghusl and, and put on their nice clothes and ether and the house smells good on the day of Eid. Try to live this day because if Juma is going to be like a, the Sabbath and the Ahad, we would lose these kind of uh, virtues that Allah has placed for the Muslims on the day of Juma. So it, we don't have to just necessarily be, you know, in a masjid to, to do that. We, this is our own personal uh, feeling and, and our, you know, excitement that this day of Juma is here with us. Um, it's a day when dua is accepted. So uh, again, you don't necessarily have to be at the masjid, but uh, you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Dhaqara Yawmul Juma, Faqala Fihi Sa'atun, La Yuwafiquha Abdun Muslimun, Wa Huwa Qa'imun Yusalli, Yes, Allah Ta'ala Shay'an illa a'tahu iyahu wa ashara biyadihi yuqalliluha. So the Prophet said, there is a time on Friday at which a Muslim, while he or she is performing the salah and is making dua, will be granted whatever he or she is supplicating for. And here, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pointed with his hand to indicate it's a small period, very small period. By the way, there are 40 opinions when this small period is, but it is a time when the khutbah and so forth is going on. My advice, the advice to myself and to all of you, even though we might be at home praying, this is still, <laughs> Friday is still this blessed day. Don't think that you don't go to masjid and the blessing of Yawmul Jumu'ah is gone. I want us to re revive that shu'ur, that feeling and that emotion and that excitement that the day of, and that symbol of our joy for the week, because sometimes we get busy in our work and here it is, Allah locks us up at home and these things should not be lost or thinking that only if I go to masjid, then they are important. Uh, in fact, these are the blessing, blessing, blessings of the day of Jummah. And one should not feel that if he is not praying Jummah, then there is no blessing for him. So let us at least make sure we, we get whatever is available. Okay, so that in masjid is not available. Rest of things are available. Let us not deprive ourselves from them. 
Prophet SAW kana yakula salawatul khams wa jumatu ila jumati wa ramadhan ila ramadhana mukaffiratun ma baynahunna idha tunibal kabair that the five daily prayer and juma one juma to the other juma and one ramadan to the other ramadan is expiation wiping out of sins committed in between them so long as major sins are avoided so one juma to another juma is a means of wiping out our sins that allah you know is so forgiving and merciful he makes this prayer our daily prayer juma to one juma ramadan to the next ramadan and we hope and pray allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this ramadan a blessing for us and truly uh, open our hearts open our massages so that we can go back uh, humbly and worship him in the month of ramadan now uh, what can be done uh, we mentioned any one of you attending Friday should take a bath. Um, reading Surah Tul Kahf, and this is something that, again, maybe people are busy with work on the normal day. Now we are locked in. We have no excuse. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Hadith, "Man qara'a Surah Al Kahf Layla Al Jum'ati Adha Al." Whoever reads the Surah Al Kahf on the night of Juma, and again, there is some other hadith that talks about on the day of Juma, uh, will have a light that will stretch between him and the ancient house, which means the Kaaba. This is hadith, is Hassan, it is uh, considered as a sung hadith. And so, reciting Surah Kahf on the night, Thursday night, tonight, or up until Salatul Juma, to recite Surah Al Kahf is something that you should should do. Um, what to avoid on the day of Juma, or what to to know? That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned. Uh, that now this is a hadith that yes it is a, you know from sahih muslim that the prophet وسلم, is saying on the pulpit either some people stop neglecting the friday prayer or allah will seal their heart and they will be among the heedless. Now, this is under normal circumstance. This is not when we cannot leave our house because of the virus that is, you know, the, we are trying to save ourselves and save society. In another hadith, Mantaraka al Jama'at al Salas, Salasa, sorry, Salasa Marat, Tahawanan biha taba Allahu ala qalbi. Now, sometimes these. Hadith comes and they kind of haunt us that the person who misses three Juma without any valid reason. Okay, so now we have val valid reason. So people can miss several Juma'at because of this valid reason of what we are trying to save ourselves and save society and the deadly effect of the coronavirus. So uh, you know, you might hear, know this hadith that if you don't pray three Jama'ah, Allah will set a seal over someone's heart. So don't take it uh, to the point that you become, uh, you know, so depressed because this here is the word here, Tahawunan, is when you do it without any valid reason, without any valid excuse. So Salah is going on in the Masajid and you just don't feel like going for Juma. This is Tahawanan. So now that we are at home, um, and again, we'll come to that uh, towards the end that we're going to discuss, but don't let this uh, make you feel depressed because, um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is merciful uh, in, in not putting a burden on us that we cannot bear. Now, praying Juma in our difficult times, that is what we are in right now. So let us not 
uh, philosophize and think of another time. This is what why we are doing this particular session. Maybe when times get better, we are going to do some, you know, Juma'a khutbah in the fullness that those who would like to know the whole uh, works of Juma'a khutbah, you know, in the details and to give khutbah in a masjid or, you know, some uh, maybe their school or whatever, that we are going to go through some training session online for the Salatul Juma. But here we are in extreme difficult times. And all the fatawas that are, are there are telling us to pray our Salah. Um, you know, it is, it is permissible um with a lot of condition to pray at home while we it is uh wajib basically to cancel in the masajid because of the coronavirus so you know the fatawa from ikna fit council of north america amja they are all unanimous with regards to canceling juma in the masajid to prevent the spread of coronavirus okay so Without any shade of doubt, this is a unanimous uh, agreement to cancel the Juma in the Masajid. And I would like to read what uh, the Fit Council has a, a number of points, and I would like to uh, all of you to perhaps spend some time and, and read that. So while some schools of law did allow three or four people, that is three people along with the Imam, to perform Juma'a, and hence according to those schools, it would not be invalid for families to establish Juma'a in their houses. And this, uh, particularly the Hanafi Madhab, and not so much with the Maliki Madhab, but in this circumstance, I would assume knowing their their law, their fiqhi position, that in the urf in which you're living in. So this is a new urf for now. But it is basically Hanafi madhab that is saying that it is permissible for three or four people to perform Juma. Um, and hence, according to those schools, it would not be invalid for families to establish Juma in their houses if their numbers are met. The Fit Council does not encourage this practice unless attenuating individual circumstances exist. Sorry, extenuating individual circumstances exist that makes this option the better one. The goal of the ban on social intermingling without would be defeated if mini Juma service began in people's houses. So, this comes with a very, very, um, you know, strong condition. And I want to warn here that please know that doing Juma at home can only be done in such dire situation as we are with the pandemic. And only if the conditions are met, if not Zuhur, Salah should be done. So if we don't have that minimum amount and we should not as the as the fatwa is saying don't try to make your home like another masjid this is one of the problem we are having with this coronavirus you know allah has locked us up in our home and we try all kind of means we go online we shop online we go online and we want to spend all of our time online when in fact we should really spend our time with ourselves so i just wanted to i'm just making that as a side point but uh in such dire situation as in a pandemic and if those conditions are met you it is permissible once the situation normalize doing juma at home should not be encouraged as the better option is at the masjid and all the virtues are at the masjid. And we have not mentioned the virtues of Juma at the masjid because obviously no one 
can go to the masjid now but uh, we i just uh, wanted to uh, mention here that we should not feel that okay this is we can pray Jummah at home like that no because there is the option of which is the better option at praying in the masjid home is in this dire situation the conditions are met and you know precautions are are taken because even if you bring friends over and next thing you know you defeat the purpose of which we cancel the juma in the masjid and that is you do not want the mixture of people you know in an environment to save uh, life so now doing juma at home so let us assume that you go with that opinion and you have all the necessary conditions of doing your salatul juma at home um, then it will be done uh, there will be two khutbah with the sitting down in between just like how you will do in the masjid and here we are going to to do the minimum those who have the ability of performing uh, you know the juma khutbah and they know it they don't need to you know go through the minimum here because we are talking about minimum not everybody can uh, perform salatul juma at home but if you want to attempt doing it and maybe it will be good you address your family um, so this might be a good um, opportunity that you get to address your family on issues so the minimum uh, can be done with the hamd and the salutation of the Prophet ﷺ, some verses from the Quran, and this can be the first khutbah. And the second khutbah is the hamd and salutation on the Prophet ﷺ and some du'as. And then you finish and you uh, come and you lead your Salatul Jum'ah with two rakat, and you would have fulfilled that requirement of Salatul Jum'ah. Again, I am saying that this is not the normal circumstance. This is the extraordinary exception and the circumstances in which we are in. So if you want to have that uh, feeling of that khutbah, then there are scholars such as Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah that says that three persons along with the Imam can can have Salat al -Juman. Those three persons have to be, you know, uh, male, balik. They have to be mature male persons. So sometimes people say, okay, what happened if there are one male and three, four females? Let's not go into that, uh, you know, discussion here. You know, if they, if it says four male persons, you know, that is a condition, find that condition. Other than that, pray Salatul Zuhur and you will be fine. Okay, nothing is wrong if someone before your Salatul Zuhur, you listen to something online. You might want to listen to something online, listen to uh, Nasiha, or even they call it khutbah, even they call it a sermon online. It is not valid to use a sermon online and then line up and pray two rakat for Salatul Juma. That is not allowed at all. What is permissible that you are in the same hall there at home, you make a little khutbah and you pray your Salatul Juma, a minimum of four people, that will be the, the bare necessity. But other than that, you cannot listen to a khutbah outside and then line up and, or listen to that imam and follow that imam online. This deen is not an online deen. This deen is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we can get nasiha. We can get like what we are doing. We can use online for some things. But when it comes to our ibadat, we can't put an image of the Kaaba in our house and look at the online and walk around the Kaaba and say, this is, this is tawaf. So we have to be very careful with, with too much of online uh, stuff coming uh, to us and we feel that it is okay. It is, in as much as you can see it and you can see the Kaaba and you can you are not 
and you're not there, it is not that you're performing uh, tawaf or sa'i or hajj on a virtual, you know, online vision. Similarly is, is the khutbah. Yes, you can hear it, but you do not feel that this is what uh, has to be, um, that is permissible. So the first khutbah, uh, the hamd is now whatever I put in blue here, that that is the bare minimum. You know, the bare minimum is to say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen, or Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. These are the bare minimum, plus you recite some surah, and then you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh, amma ba'd, and then you recite the surah, or you give a little short talk, you can mention a hadith or two. Again, if you are if you are knowledgeable of how to give the khutbah, this is the uh, format. This is the you know bare format. So alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu ala ashrafil wal mursaleen. Or you can say in alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inu. ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوصي نفسي وأوصيكم بتقوى الله عز وجل Call Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala fil Quran al and you read a short surah, whatever surah, you can give a little translation, you can give a little thoughts about that. You want to give a little longer bayan, you do that. And when you finish, you say, Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa il muslimin min kulidam fa astaghfiruhu inna hu hu al ghafur rahim. So you do that and you sit down and then you will stand for the second khutbah. So the first khutbah is basically giving ham to Allah, salat and salam on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, reciting some verses of the Quran, maybe a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you want to give some explanation, you want to give some, some addition, you want to give uh, some more points on what you are saying, all well and good when you finish, you say, "Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'iru al-Muslimin min kulli dham fastaghfiruhu inna hu wa ghafur rahim." And then you sit down and you make some du'a. Again, some of the scholars believe that that is the point when your du'a, among the forty opinions, some of them think that this is the point when your du'a can be accepted. So spend a minute or two. Um, for sure, you don't have people who are going to rush to go to work, like what we have in our masajid. And, um, you know, the second, uh, so you, you can spend a little time, make some private dua. Then you get up and again, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Wa Salatu Wa Salam Ala Ashrafil Anbiya Wa Mursaleen, or Alhamdulillah, Wa Salatu Wa Salam Ala Rasulillah. You know, all of these are. Uh, so you give basically praises to Allah and salat and salam to Rasulullah again this is the bare minimum you can add in Allah wa malaika qala Allah ta'ala in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayuhu ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima and you can give Salat, send salam to the Prophet Sallallahu Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. And then you can make whatever dua. You know, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kana adhaban nar and you can make 
again, if you know some du'as, you can read those du'as. Rabbana na tuzik kuluba na ba'da idha hadayta na wahab lana min ladunka rahma inna ka antal wahab. Whatever du'a you you want to read, you can read. If you are, you know, have more knowledge to add more du'a, that is fine. Again, these are bare minimum that you can read. And I will go through that in the end for what minimum you can do and still have your uh, Salatul Juma. Again, providing you have those conditions. And the main condition in our time is to avoid any crowd. Crowd here would mean more than four, three, four people. Because this is what this whole lockdown is about, to prevent people from interacting with each other, getting close to each other. Okay? And then you will go in Allah, Ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan, wa yita'iz al qurba, wa yanha an al fashai wal munkar wa bag, ya'idukum la'allakum tadakkaroon, wa awfu bi ahdi Allahi da'ahatum, wa la tanqudu al aymana bada tawkidiha, wa qad ja'altum Allah alaykum kafila, in Allah ya'lamu ma taf'alun, faskuru Allah aladhi ma yaskurkum, وَدْعُوهُ يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ وَشْكُرُوهُ لَا نِعْمِهِ يَزِرْكُمْ وَلَذِكُرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَسْنَعُونَ So basically this is the, the minimum. So you can get up and say Alhamdulillah وَالصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ That we give praise and thanks to Allah and our salutations on Prophet Muhammad وسلم, on his companions, his household. Allah says, by time surely man will be in the state of loss except those who believe and do righteous deeds and encourage one another and support one another in patience in in the truth and support one another in patience you can see that and aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru lahu li wa lakum wa lisa'il muslimin min kulli dhanb fastaghfiru innahu huwal ghafur rahim and you sit down you get up again alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayyuhalladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima and everybody would know the what we generally call the root or still, uh, sending salam to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma barik ala Muhammad. And you can say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana, wa kina adhaba nar. And then you can say, Faskurullah ala dhima yaskurkum, wa duhu yasajib lakum, wa shkuruhu ala ni'mihi yazirkum, wa dhikullahi akbar, wa allahu ya'lamu ma tasnaun. Hakeemu salat. So this is, a, this is the bare minimum or the backbone of khutbah. Other than that, you can add, as you would know that imams, they add, 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 add until people say, oh, we have to go back to work. So now I give you some of the minimum things, things that you you have listened to 52 khutbah per year for those who are going. This should not be something too difficult for you to do. Okay. Imagine if you go for the last 20 years, 30 years at the masjid, these are the same, you know, what we call the rubric or the, the skeleton of what the khutbah is. And by now you would have memorized a lot of what you would hear repeating from one Juma to another. So inshallah, we will close here and we are going to open for um, a few minutes of questioning. Uh, if you have some questions, we are going to uh, take some questions. Uh, let it just be basically for, you know, this extreme situation in which we are in. Let us not go into lots of other fiqhi details, whether, you know, what is halal and what is haram. We are not doing that right now. What we are doing is how can we survive uh, these days and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it 
easy for all of us, protect all of us, protect our families, protect, protect our communities. And we beg Allah as the month of Ramadan is coming that he gives us the tawfiq of uh, having our Ramadan in our masajid and our Salat al tarawi our brotherhood, our sisterhood, that all that we enjoy in the masajid, the day of Eid, all of that, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. The first question is that um, in second khutbah, when Imam is making duas, uh, do we have to raise our hands? No, you don't have to raise hands. In fact, there is, you know, this is not the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. One time there was a rain, uh, rain dua that he lifted hand to make rain dua. Other than that, there is no raising of hand in making dua. Um, people do it. Um, it doesn't break any uh, salah, but it is, uh, you know, you just say the dua and if the sunnah you want to follow, then it is just reciting those duas. So one of the questions is that do we have to mention a hadith in a khutbah or can a khutbah be without a hadith? Oh, oh, definitely a khutbah can be without a hadith. A khutbah can be without a hadith. Uh, you remember when I'm giving the final summary, I just recited, recited Surah Al-Asr, okay? And then after that Surah Al-Asr, you want to translate it, it's fine. You want to recite Surah Fatiha, translate it, that's fine. And then you, you know, أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهَ and then you will sit down. So you don't have to, but if you want to, again, these are some of the backbone or the skeleton of the khutbah that you can, uh, bare minimum that you can have. Okay. But I, was, I, I would also like to, uh, brothers must not be afraid to open Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and take out an, a hadith and try to learn it in these days as well. So quoting hadith is not should not be scary for anybody. And I don't want us to lose touch with the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. This deen is Quran and Sunnah. So let us not shy away from the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. <laughs> Another question is that um, given the current situation, do we have to stand right next to each other or can we leave some space in between? Yes, you can leave some space in between, but I'm sure these are people of your house, your household. So you still can leave some space because uh, social distancing can also mean that people in your own home uh, you still need whatever precaution and better yet, you need precaution in people from your own home uh, because you don't want to, may Allah, Allah, may Allah forbid, but you don't want to let someone who is infected affect the other members of the family. So you can stand a few, a few uh, inches apart, maybe six inches apart from each other so you don't have to touch it, each other. Um, if you have a stranger, you know, with you, a stranger meaning like a neighbor or so, try not to shake hand, try, take all the precaution that is necessary because it is these precautions that such, um, you know, big, huge uh, prohibitions have taken place in our masajid. So if we prevent it there, then, in Babil Aula, from a case of priority, we should avoid doing that in our home. Exactly. Um, another brother is asking that um, in, uh, he has seen some khatib um, who continue with the advice in their second khutbah as well, and then they finish it off with the part that mentioned here as that khutbah. Yes. Uh, yeah, he would like an advice on that. Is that okay to do or? Absolutely. Remember, we are giving you the bare minimum, but uh, some khatib do half of the khutbah, a theoretical half of the khutbah, the first khutbah, 
and maybe something more practical in the second khutbah, you know? So nothing is wrong with that. Uh, but the second khutbah does have, you know, dua and dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than the first. So they still do that, but sometimes they just break it so that your thoughts are broken. And um, you add some more points as you go along in your second khutbah. Um, another question, um, a brother is asking, uh, would there be a, another class which uh, would go a lot more in depth and to do a regular Juma Khutbah? Yes, and uh, uh, Brother Farhan would be the one who will call and for us to do that. And the slides will be different. Obviously, we are going to have uh, structured, you know, your posture, your points, how you connect your points to your topic, choosing your topic and all of that. So we can do that after this coronavirus is gone because I don't want to make a lot of khadim now. <laughs> and the next thing you, you end up in your masjid and now you have 10 khatib all want to give khutbah. So inshallah, we will, um, we will do that. Uh, we will try to have some some khutbah online courses so that it is properly administered and the details uh, we can have more than one session because that is a lot more details a lot more details and it's all as reminders and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of our brothers and sisters who attended tonight and have given their feedback, their you know, their, their patience in listening. I hope Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, grant all of us the blessings of the Juma that we would have normally had in our masajid. It is very tough on, on all of us. It is extremely tough on all of us that we will watch the masjid and it is empty and uh, we cannot go we must reflect that there must be something allah SWT wants us to to you know come together in our thoughts in our mind in our hearts and let us hope and pray that we we get that lesson that allah wants to teach us may allah forgive us may allah have mercy on us may allah bless us Bless our families, protect us, protect our families, protect this Muslim Ummah, protect humanity from this disaster. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us peace and tranquility in our home and that we do our ibadah in our homes as we would have liked to have done it in the Masajid. May Allah give us that reward for it. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Ama Yisifun Salamun Ala Al-Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Bismillahi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Wal-Asr Inna Al-Insana Lafi Khusr Illa Al-Ladhina Amanu Wa Amilu Salihati Wa Tawasa Bil Haqi Wa Tawasa Bil Sam Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh Wa Alaikum